Cameron talking about TV new episode, keeping you up to date with all of your new and future favorite TV shows. Please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get all the new updates on your updated, updated TV, TV needs. Got another Game of Thrones prequel Blood Moon video for you here. And I'm very excited about this one. I've done a ton of research and I'm ready to knock this video out, out of the park for you. Uh, we are bound to step into spoiler territory because we are going to cover everything. We're going to give you a background history, then we're going to go over the history of the Age of the Dawn, the war between the Children of the Forest and the First Men completely. So with that being said, spoiler alert, as we will cover all of the possible plot points. Westeros history, go. So the background history that I wanted to go over is the First Men are crossing the Arm of Dorne, which is a southern connection between Essos and Westeros. And we started fighting with the Children of the Forest. Now fast forward one hammer of waters and approximately 4,000 years of time, and that connection between Essos and Westeros is severed. So that leaves us with the current map that we have, where we're looking at Essos, the Narrow Sea, and then Westeros. And then back to the Dawn Age and the war between the First Men and the Children of the Forest, uh, present day, as far as where the prequel speaking goes. Um, the First Men were cutting down the Children of the Forest and um, moving, pushing them back like it was going out of style. Um, you know, we had the strategy, the tactics, iron, and armor. So really, it was no match. They're smaller in stature, and they did have magic. But as far as brute force... We were able to push our way through. Now, obviously, cutting down weirwood trees as we go, and they really didn't like that. Um, that is a source of their magic. So they created, in a bit of a sore loser move, I would say, the Night King. Um, in the books, it did go down a little bit of a different route, and we are certainly going to cover that in just a bit. Um, but they created the, the Night King and the others were born. Now, so White Walkers and Whites uh, were moving about the country and that's when the Long Night began. Uh, now, as Old Nan said a couple videos ago, uh, you know, it lasted a generation and children died in their beds rather than trying to get up to go eat anything because they were afraid of death from, you know, the Whites or the White Walkers as they were really running rampant in Westeros at that time. And everybody really founded themselves getting their arses handed to them. So we did the only thing that we could do, and we made a pact. The Children of the Forest and the First Men met at the Isle of Faces, and we agreed. We were going to leave them um, into the forest lands and not encroach any further. We were going to stop cutting down weirwood trees, and we asked that they teach us some of their magic uh, and we would teach them, you know, some of the blacksmithing type stuff that we had as far as abilities. So then it was a mutually beneficial agreement and peace treaty. Um, and then together we agreed that we were going to put an end to the long night. So the last hero, it is said, uh, you know, Azora High Prophecy type stuff. We, there's a lot of uh, foil hat stuff. We can get into that further as well. But uh, the last hero and the children of the forest uh, basically push the whites and the others to the lands of always winter in the north. And that is when the Night's Watch was created. Now, a very possible uh, regular set for the prequel show could be Collins Moat. Uh, and it's basically the Night Watch's southern station um, prior to the wall being built and pushing the others back. Um, and, and it was basically at the most narrow point of northern Westeros, uh, just above what's called as the Neck. Um, and it's Collins Moat. And I really feel like if it's a war between, you know, the Children of the Forest, the First Man, and the others, that would certainly be a regular crossing point that we're going to see in the upcoming show, which is exciting. Save me. Father, save me. The gods are down here. It's the six of us, you hear me? Please. Light gathers. Now my watch begins. 
shall not end until my death. I shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. I shall wear no crowns and win no glory. I shall live and die by my post. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards the realms of men. I am my life. I know that the night's watch. Such an epic scene there at the wall in the Night's Watch, which is exactly what we're talking about here. The Night's Watch was created when the wall was built and when the Long Night was ended by the last hero. Uh, the last hero, obviously, was the First Lord Commander, and along with Bran the Builder, built the wall. Um, using the magic uh, from the Children of the Forest, as well as help from giants and a ton of labor, obviously, from the Night's Watch itself, which at the time had a lot of required additions and terms uh, as far as things that were required of the Night's Watch. Um, they were required to have a, a standing thousand men at all times, uh, which in the show, you know, we got down to where there's only a couple hundred uh, just from different wars and battles and crazy. So, uh, but also they were required to add to the wall every single year. And there was 19 castles along the wall when it was first built. Um, but most of that ended, though, uh, with the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. And this is kind of what we we're getting to when we were first talking about the Night King earlier, is in the book... It's mentioned that the Night King was actually the 13th Lord Commander who fell in love with a white who he saw past the wall, beyond the wall. She had skin as white as the moon and her eyes were as blue as stars. And he loved her even though her skin was as cold as ice. Uh, now, he brought her to the castle and named himself King and named her Queen and he ruled for 13 years. So I don't know that that's going to be something that they're going to cover in the show without some sort of time jump, I would say. I mean, unless they're planning on giving us like 15 seasons in which, why didn't they do that with Game of Thrones, am I right? But anyway, so yeah, I don't think that they're going to do that specifically, but it obviously is a huge part of Game of Thrones history, so I wanted to go over that. Um, but it could give them an opportunity to do like a Lady Stoneheart or a Cold Hands um, type character that we did see from the book. Um, Cold Hands was not Uncle Benji in the books, but a separate fellow. Um, he died in the North, almost. The Children of the Forest brought him back, um, but he never really cleared up from that resurrection fog that we saw John really, you know, was in when he first came back. Um, and he stays in the North and in the Lands of Always Winter and really just helps out the Children of the Forest and the Three-Eyed Ravens. Um, through history, as obviously he was undead. Uh, and then another uh, reference from the book as a character like that would be Lady Stoneheart, um, which is really exciting. And not a ton of people who just watched the show know this, but um, Lady Stoneheart was actually Catelyn Stark, and she was found three days after the Red Wedding. So her body definitely had started to decompose. And Barrett. Don Darien found her and gave her the kiss of death, uh, the kiss of life. Uh, she was almost like Arya in that, as she was really just a cold assassin out for vengeance. She remembers. Between those two characters, I think in the prequel season that's coming up for us, we could have a big need for someone like that. You know, someone who is dead partially, uh, has the ability to be seen by whites without being seen by whites uh, could go in the far north and you know get into a really dangerous situation or help somebody that is in a really dangerous situation in the far north uh, and you know perhaps stop baby offerings or create a deal where there's baby offerings you know really either of those could be happening in this prequel so it's going to be very exciting to watch and see i appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and i did give you the spoiler warning early so when the show comes out if we go oh if we did go over anything um in spoiler territory well you heard the warning so thanks again this is cameron talking about tv going over the details and information on the plot for Blood Moon. I will keep you posted. I will link 
in the description down below my past videos. Feel free to check those out and stay excited. I will continue my series where we compare Blood Moon to other up and coming shows. Feel free to comment down below on a show that you might be interested in. I know Watchmen's coming out. That's going to be a big name on a big platform. A couple other shows for Amazon and Hulu that we need to go into and discuss further as well. So I look forward to covering everything. Let's get the conversation going down in the comments. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share the bejesus out of this. I really do appreciate any and all extra attention. And I uh, really just want to have a conversation with you guys and share my excitement about Blood Moon. So thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful night and look out for that next video coming soon.